Okay, let's see if we can get this started. Okay, I think we got it. everything going here. Okay, let's see if we can get this started. Okay, how's everybody doing tonight? I think I got it. Can everybody hear me okay? Welcome to the live stream. Awesome, awesome. Okay, let me get set up here and uh, get my notes together. I'm going to rock this thing and have some fun. Cool. Wolf Midnight hanging out. What's going on, my friend? How's it going? Cool. Been drawn? <clears throat> Been working on some, some of your craft. Awesome. Okay, let's uh, go over here. Boom. Hey, how's it going? I'm glad everybody's doing all right tonight. Got Blissful Soul. What's going on? How are we all doing? We're doing good? I'm feeling good. I got home from work just a little while ago. It's been a long day, but uh, it's time to uh, have our live session. Looking forward to this one. This one's good. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this one uh, tonight. We'll see. Well, we're gonna do it on the fly and sort of draw it on the fly and explain. And we're gonna be talking about aspect ratios and uh, how to use aspect ratios in your storyboards. What does all that craziness mean? What does that mean to a cinematographer, um, to a director? How, how does all that work? But before we get started, I'm gonna say good evening. And welcome YouTube friends uh, to the live stream. My name is Paul Anjali and I am a live action storyboard artist. And uh, I created this channel to share my journey and processes of storyboarding and visual storytelling with you. So if you are someone that's new to storyboarding and always wanted to get into it and you're interested in learning about storyboarding and uh, getting into this uh, profession, or if you're somebody that is uh, already working as a storyboard artist, you're just getting started and uh, you're trying to get better at your drawing fundamentals, your, your skills, your filmmaking, and you're trying to level up your game, or if you're just somebody that say, hey, listen, I just want to watch an artist work and see what this is all about and have some fun and just listen to me ramble and uh, about film and filmmaking and animation and comics and all sorts of fun visual storytelling mediums, uh, this is the channel for you. So welcome to my channel. I, I uh, you know, if this is something that you enjoy, uh, then go ahead and consider subscribing. I come to you uh, three times a week right now. Uh, I'm currently coming, I used to come on Tuesdays, but I, I am coming on Mondays, Thursdays and Saturdays, bringing you some of the, the uh, great content here uh, three days a week uh, without fail for going on the next, this last six months. Um, and uh, so on Monday, or on Mondays, we're doing, I host, uh, like this evening, I host my uh, storyboard, uh, Mastering the Basic Series. This is your how-to, uh, your tutorial type of session, a teaching session, uh, in terms of uh, what, what knowledge do I need to know as a storyboard artist, and we go over all the basics here on Monday nights. And then on Thursdays, I think it is so critically important uh, to have your sketchbook and to be practicing all that art you need to do. And I can't stress it enough. So I have uh, our stream sketching after hours, uh, it's sort of like our happy time hour, but just get in, get those sketches done, get those drawings done, whichever way uh, you go and you work in your sketchbooks and uh, get those drawings done. Have some fun with it. Yeah, you know, sometimes I do drawing tutorials. Other times I, I just do all different types of things, you know, to get you energized, get you excited about drawing and putting in that pencil mileage, put it in those pencil reps uh, to get better at your craft. And then on Saturdays, we have some fun 
and we do our storyboard jam sessions and the jam session is just pretty much a storyboard uh you know fun time where we pick a topic whether it be a horror a car chase an action sequence uh, a crime thriller you know uh, and there's many more genres that we can go into and we just storyboard and try to put together our thumbnails uh, think of pulling it all together. You got your teaching day, you have your practicing, your artwork day, and then we pull it all together in some fantastic storyboards. So if this is the type of thing that gets you jazzed and you want to make movies or comics or cartoons or feature animation or a music video or just want to do videos, uh, you know, cat videos or whatever, you know, um, this is a great channel to learn from. Uh, I ask for your subscription uh, to my channel. Uh, there is over, let's see where we're at right now. We are at 60. Today is number, is it really 67 live streams? Ah, boom, mind blow. 67 live streams already. I, I can't believe we've done 67. Oh my God. Man, I, I'm getting old. I'm getting gray already just doing 67 live streams. Uh, but I've been having a ball uh, doing these live streams with you folks. I'm happy to share and uh, bestow knowledge and uh, pass it on. And, uh, you know, it helps me practice my game and uh, helps me teach. I always wanted to, to teach online. And uh, I used to teach in a, a college atmosphere as an instructor uh, at my alma mater uh, university I went to school at and taught uh, a while over there and I always wanted to get back into teaching a lot of people say hey Polly go back into teaching and so I thought this YouTube channel would be a great source uh, to be able to share and, and teach again so I hope each of you are at home are getting uh, a lot of value out of these uh, these live streams I'm about ready to s not necessarily switch over keep the live streams going but I'm, I'm excited because I have some uh, undercover work I've been doing and uh, I'm looking forward to actually producing these into shorter videos and uh, doing revamping them and stuff like that to give you some um, quicker snapshots of, of the topics that we're covering so you don't have to go through a, a two hour two and a half hour live stream I love the live streams because it gives us the chance to chit chat back and forth hang out share and uh, we'll, I think it's a vital part of a YouTube channel and uh, the experience, uh, but also I want to be able to give you some bite-sized pieces so you can get the content that you need and go off and go do your boards, go off and do your comic, go off and do those things to make you successful. And uh, so if that's something you like to do, like I said, again, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, on this particular video, once we get in the content, if you're enjoying the content and feeling the jam on it, uh, go ahead and hit a, the like button. Uh, that lets me lets YouTube know, hey, listen, uh, we like this. And uh, even more so, please take two seconds, drop me a comment. Show me some love. I, pre I appreciate that. Just a quick little comment, even if it's just a happy face emoji or something like that. It, it tells the YouTube al algorithm, hey, listen, uh, more artists want to see uh, this type of video, and it helps push this video out to other people. So uh, for all the, the time I spend uh, putting these sort of lecture series together, I, I just appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Hey, and I can't believe it. Oh my gosh, I, I just can't believe it. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. Boom! I'm just like, I am so humbled and so thankful to each of you uh, taking the time not only to subscribe to the channel, but just taking your time out of your busy day just to hang out with me. You know, um, right now it's uh, what is it almost midnight over here. I usually go till midnight to two in the morning on these sessions. The house is quiet and uh, I can get things done in my office over here and uh, it's fun just to hang out with you folks so any questions at all please throw them into the chat you know and if you want to connect with me uh, you can reach me uh, uh, a variety of different ways but uh, let me throw it down for you real quick if you want to get in touch with Polly uh, my name again is Paul Angeli I'm a live action storyboard artist uh, Email is pretty simple uh, for those of you that want that are still email people or if you're a business inquiry about me, um, it is at mr.paul.angeli at gmail.com. That's my main uh, business email. And uh, you can check out my website. It's www.paulangeli.com. And that's www.paulangeli.com. And a lot of you great folks have been reaching out to me over on Instagram. Uh, I, I try to post 
regularly each and every day, sometimes multiple times throughout the day. Like I was sharing some sketchbook stuff with you earlier today. Uh, but uh, if you want to DM me to keep that content and keep that contact, share some of your work of what you're working on. I got a lot of great people sharing their work with me. Uh, I'd love to see your work and, and give me some feedback on it. And then also I have the YouTube channel over here and I'm getting a little bit more uh, time given to LinkedIn and, and uh, Ali Tan Art had some fantastic work. I, I uh, posted over on uh, my my stream there on LinkedIn some great work. Uh, Ali was uh, working with uh, the uh, Unreal Engine, and uh, that's just fantastic to see the, the work of other board artists, and that's just awesome to see. So those are the ways to get in contact with me. Don't be shy. Don't be a stranger. It's always great to have somebody that you can mentor up with, or if I'm just here to inspire you and uh, keep it going man job well done so uh let's check over to the chat and see who we got hanging out with us today so i got uh wolf midnight's back again hey what's going on wolf i, I think everything's going well with you um i saw uh, blissful soul thanks so much for joining in um uh wolf midnight said i've been listening to all the videos you have posted while I'm working. Cool. Man, thanks so much. I really appreciate that. Thanks for listening in. And for other folks out there, um, I love having you on the live streams, but if you can't make it, I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to watch the replay. Um, and uh, there's a lot of the community out here that's watching the replays. I've been trying to do some live streams on different days on different platforms so we could try to inter interact and say hi, how you doing, and see how things are going with you. Uh, feel free to connect that way. Um, I, I might try to do another uh, just mini coffee chat live stream maybe tomorrow on both Instagram and on here on YouTube and uh, just, just to be able to, to reach all of you at, at different times a day. I know it's difficult. This is sort of a great time for me. I know I got some things coming up for the next three Tuesdays or, and uh, so I, I had to push this to Monday. But, uh, you know, I just want to be able to be available to you guys and uh, hanging out. So, uh, and then I got Bruce Lee. What's up, Bruce? How you doing? Uh, good for you to join back in. Appreciate you always j jamming and hanging out with us. And then Blissful Souls so asks, how do you approach perspective? Sometimes I have problems getting caught up in perspective. Um, that's a big topic. And uh, I, I am, a, I, I'm going to tell you what, uh, Blissful Soul, um, I am soon, I don't know if I can do it this Thursday, but I want to do a whole uh, deconstruction of how to do perspective. I think perspective is a critical tool uh, to, to be able to be a great storyboard artist. You need to know those fundamentals, one point, two point, three point, you know, just the different types of uh, perspectives and how do you, you know, can you, how do you fake it to how do you actually do it? So, um, so hang tight on that one. I'm gonna, I wrote that one down already, uh, Blissful Soul. So uh, hang tight. Uh, one of these uh, Thursday, uh, you know, um, sketching after hour sessions, we'll go over the basics of uh, perspective. I'll try to, I don't know when I can do it. I don't know if I'm, I already have another agenda I have going on for this Thursday, but it's coming up soon. Uh, so uh, be happy to talk about that real quick uh, at uh, in one of our future episodes. So hang tight, Blissful Soul. I got you covered. So, and then uh, I got Buddha Belly. Uh, what's going on, Lauren? How you doing? Good to see everybody hanging out. So, I'm super excited to talk about this topic. Um, I think it's uh, when it comes to fundamentals uh, to be, be being a great storyboard artist. I think you need to know. Uh, we've talked about it. You know, of all the different aspects that you need to know. And this is a if this was an easy job, anybody could be a storyboard artist and uh, a visual storyteller, whether it be for comics or for animation or feature animation or live action film or story, you know, storybooks, whatever it might be. Um, we got to be able to tell stories and we can tell, you have to know the fundamentals of story and story structure, but also too, how do we visualize it? We're the visualizers. We're working with the director or the client and we're pulling all that information into drawings. And those drawings are going to be communicating story, emotion, uh, the beats of, of the, the sequence, uh, whatever it might be. And uh, we, we got to know uh, a large swath of uh, information. And one thing that you need to know is you need to know about filmmaking. And uh, I think it's really important to have that, those chops uh, that you need to do the whole production life cycle of a, a film. 
Uh, you need to know uh, what everybody's job is, what his role, and so you understand what your role is designing the blueprint of the storyboards for a film. If we're talking feature film or, you know, it could be a cartoon or because we use a lot of these same principles, a little bit different strategy and different ones, but we use similarly some of the same stuff, you know in terms of visual storytelling, how we tell the story. So in one of those aspects of filmmaking, we've talked about lenses. We've talked, or I don't think we've talked about lenses, but we've talked about shots. We've talked about different camera moves. We've talked about uh, shot composition. We've talked about staging. We've talked about how to break down a script. We've been talking a lot about filmmaking. But one thing we haven't talked about yet is aspect ratios. So, and a lot of people get confused about aspect ratios and, and we're going to be talking about aspect ratios in general and what the heck is aspect ratio. And number two, how, how do filmmakers use aspect ratios to tell story, to make you feel emotion? What are some of our top, uh, you know, even uh, Chris Nolan, who just won a huge best, uh, you know, uh, best director and, and, and Oppenheimer just won one for the best film. Uh, for 2023, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. just walked away. Uh, Killian Murphy just walked, you know, just so many people walked away with uh, awards, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, I know that, uh, you know, Chris Nolan uh, uses a lot of these different aspect ratios uh, in his filmmaking. Wes Anderson, there's a ton of directors uh, utilizing the power of aspect ratios to get you into a story and uh, you know make you feel something. So pretty cool stuff. So um, okay, so we got everybody here. I'm glad everybody's hanging out. Uh, I'm gonna go over to Little Polly. If there's any other questions, so let me throw some questions out to you friends out there. So do you know what an aspect ratio is? Do you use those when you're storyboarding or or you're putting your 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 information together? So just curious. I'll, I'll throw it out to the chat. Let me know. I'm going to take a little sip of my coffee here. And uh, it's going to be a long, a little, not too long of a night, but let's, let's get into aspect uh, ratios. And uh, get into that. And let's go over here. A little while ago, I did a, a quick little frame of Godzilla. Gohira, you know, um, and uh, I love the Godzilla character. <laughs> uh, I know the uh, Godzilla uh, was a minus one, um, just one for Academy Award for special effects. I haven't gotten to see the film yet. A lot of people are like, Polly, you gotta see it. You're a Godzilla fan. I said, okay, cool. So I, I gotta watch it. You know, I'm always, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a good movie or bad. I've heard that one was really, really good. Um, I have a lot of buddies that have worked on, that work over at ILM and have worked on a lot of the uh, Kong Skull Island and Godzilla. I have a, a friend that's local over here in Pennsylvania and uh, he does a lot of that. The, uh, I guess the, the, not necessarily the rigging, but all the muscle musculatures on each of the models and stuff like that. So we're always talking, when we're hanging out, talking film. So good stuff here. Cool. So let's talk about aspect ratios. And... Um, there's a lot of different aspect ratios out there, but how do you pick the right one? How, how, how do you know which one the director wants? Well, first of all, you have to ask because they might have a vision already, but the, the, the aspects ratios give you a different, um, d different uh, ways that the, the picture frame works. And in those picture frames, um, you can tell different stories in a different type of frame. And uh, it makes it really interesting well, let's sort of go back in time and take a, you know, Wayne and Garth from Wayne's World. You know, let's go back in time and talk about, let me go over here. Boom. So, again, aspect ratios for storyboard artists is our, our topic for tonight. And uh, we're going back in time with Wayne and Garth. And... Uh, Let's talk about, grab a color here, aspect ratios. Okay, so let's go back and sort of have a history lesson. I'll put on my glasses and my teacher's, my professor's cap, and let's talk about stuff. So, back in the day, early man,
do some black in there. Okay, so so uh, we'll go like this. Sort of a storyboard structure here. So as we're telling our story, so back in the day, during early man, um, early man would draw on cave walls. And uh, we would draw on cave walls, right? Uh, we became artists. Uh, you know, uh, we, we, we drew about the hunt. We, we drew uh, inside caves, whether you're in, uh, in, in, in France or wherever, you know, and early man was drawing inside these caves. Uh, they had their torch going and uh, they were drawing and reminiscing about the hunt and uh, cataloging and, and telling their stories you know, in terms of uh, what they were doing. So early man would do that. And as we went through history, um, we put the ideas of art and uh, we began to paint, not on uh, a surface area like a wall or a cave system. You know, we weren't drawing like this anymore. Um, we decided to draw in rectangles. And what I mean by that is when uh, we started to paint or draw, we drew on canvases or painted on canvases. And when we started drawing in a picture frame, if it was a portrait, we would draw a portrait of somebody and we would draw them whether it be religious or we had to paint the king or the queen it was a uh, uh, it was a uh, and the king uh, King Henry or whoever was being drawn at the time. And we draw the, the painting of the king so we could remember the king forever. And your paintings were pretty much all portrait size. So they were, they were long, vertically, and horizontally they were short and this became the ideal you know uh, picture you know so when we're doing portraits uh, come on it was done like this and most of the paintings at the time if you look at a lot of the paintings uh, of early paintings uh, they were all sort of always vertical in nature and uh you know it was always a a, a painting of uh you know an individual or their horse or a hunting scene or whatever it might be and then we got said well what what about landscapes so with a landscape we started we said well this isn't going to work for a landscape and so we started 
having a more horizontal image, you know, and with that, we would do landscapes. So most of the time as you see a landscape painting, it would be whether it be at the beach or wherever we're going, we would see a landscape painting. So then your paintings became more horizontal. And less vertical. Because we wanted to see um, how the eyes saw, you know. So if I'm looking at the, pa at the painting, that painting looked massive, okay. So, like I said, we started off with early man and we're drawing and painting in caves with uh, with uh, with uh, light in a dark cave and we're, we're painting we're getting creative and then we go into painting and then we have the Renaissance kicks off uh, as we go through art history and you know when it comes to art and of course we went into sculpture but we're trying to keep everything right now that we're talking about we're focused on rectangles we're focused on the picture frame so if it was a portrait it would be higher so more vertical and if it was a landscape boom it would be wider so uh, more on the horizontal plane of uh, what we're doing you know and so if you think about it they were all rectangles so from there, we won, We went on for many, many years talking about all this wonderful art. And we can go back and talk about art history. But then an invention came up. It was called the camera. And now we can go and take a picture. And we don't need to paint anymore. And we could take a, a picture. And we can go ahead and develop. And I know uh, I'm not here to talk about cameras themselves and the history of, of, uh, of, of cameras. But um, that's sort of the beginnings of what we're talking about with aspect ratios. Because we went from cameras that could take a picture. You can just say, took a single image. Okay. And then we went from there to a camera could take a moving image. Okay, so if you if you think about it, you're like, holy smoke. Now I went from a camera that took a single picture into a camera that can take multiple moving images, multiple pictures to give the illusion of movement in that uh, scenario. You know, 24 frames a second, you know, it's like you're going, wow, mind blow, you know, in terms of what we're doing. Um, blissful uh, Chauncey, hey, what's going on? Just saying hi to everybody as we take a little break here and there. Uh, Chauncey, what's going on? Chauncey Pierce says hi all. Blissful Soul says, would landscapes be for more information to capture more? You are absolutely right on the money, uh, Blissful Soul. Uh, we're going to be talking about that. So if you think about that, uh, keep that in your back pocket, my friend. You are on the money and where I'm going. And uh, let me just see here. Let's go. Boop. Yeah, you're on the money. You're on the right track, my friend. Your brain is going overtime, and you're going to be, be the grand prize winner right now. So if you think about that real quick, little sneak peek for you. Um, 
blissful soul. You know, if you're thinking about landscapes and, and those things, uh, boom, what kicks into head? It kicks into your mind. It's 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 the wide angle, the wide angle lens, the wide angle shot. Bam, there you go. So, um, little precursor. Let's reverse back one more time and go back into history. So, um, right now we've talked about early cave paintings. We've talked about uh, portraits. And we've talked about landscape paintings. We're now in talking about the development of the camera. Now we're taking a single image. And now we're the next invention after that. Wisdom is grabbing, using the same style of camera, but now I can grab a moving image, okay? And the introduction to cinema and uh, all that good stuff. So uh, cool stuff. Um, but let's talk about uh filmmaking and uh, that that camera and sort of you know we we go about and we think about chaplin uh you know um and those type of silent films and things like that and it's like we we were taking so we were taking the the opportunity of having uh and you know and you know getting a, an image onto a negative and producing that negative into a, you know an image now we're we're putting that uh that negative into a uh, film and getting that stuff going um, Chauncey says, this is great. Watching and listen, listening while I'm boarding right now. Sweet. Cool. Okay. So, um, let's talk about, um, that process. Okay. And sort of, we're going to sort of do it visually a little bit and, um, have some fun with this. So, um, Okay, so there's a couple things I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about. Okay, so let's go back to the drawing board here. So we were talking about the camera and getting that going. So if you've ever seen, um, we're, we're fortunate today because everything is by 16 by 9. Okay, and we're going to talk about the future and um, stuff. But when we're talking right now, today, 2024, you know, uh, we're, we're talking about 16, 16 by 9, you know, in terms of an aspect ratio, okay? And, and this is pretty much your uh, uh, digital, digital aspect ratio, right? Okay, uh, this, this is today. Okay, is the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Yeah, and this is for your today's, t you know, today's, uh, uh, today's TVs, uh, flat screen. It's your computer screen. Uh, we take this into consideration that, is that this is what we have today. But we're going to go back into that history time machine like Wayne and Garth and go back and talk about film okay and um, how that how that film worked um, you know in term in terms of what we're doing you know and the camera we would grab that that sequence and maybe early film all it was was everything had to be done in order and captured into that sequence because we weren't editing uh, the celluloid layout. We weren't ed editing the film, uh, you know, film itself yet, and it was just from starting to beginning, you know, start to end, on those uh, filmed in sequence, you know, in terms of uh, the, the the picture. But um, we would go and and you would go and you do capture with the camera, develop your film, and then you would go to the movie theater. And then the image was projected onto a screen and you were able to see that projection, you know, in terms of what you saw. And the image you would see was a very boxy image when you went to the movie theater. And, uh, you know, let's just say get the theater and all the people in the theater would go is a very boxy you know the image was being viewed onto the screen and uh, then you had uh, 
you know, uh, Charlie Chaplin. How did he walk? Charlie Chaplin had that. He had his cane and and Charlie Chaplin would do his, whether it be the tramp or whatever he would do. And you go to the movie theater and you watch the silent film. But it was very, if you think about it, it was a very um, boxy image in terms of the image itself that was being projected on the screen so so how how did that that work um how did the camera um you know uh work itself um and pretty much the way it worked is whatever the image was whatever fit on that film and um the way that it would work let me just draw that real quick boy we're really going deep today deep on the knowledge okay so if I'm gonna draw a, um, a film strip okay you're early film strip looked like that Okay, and you pretty much, you had the, 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 the length of what you saw on the projection screen was whatever <clears throat> image <clears throat> that, that fit over there. And, uh, and, and for the film, you would have one, two, three, four uh, perforations <coughs> in the in the film, and this image would then uh, go through the projector, and that would go up onto the wall, and that's how pretty much um, most films were done. It was a four by three, uh, you know, uh, scenario in terms of. You know how that image worked. It'd be four perforations. Um, they called it a, a four perf pull down in terms of uh, the information that was that was given and, and how we work on that. Um, if you divided the, the two, it would be an aspect ratio. So dividing four into three to get your fraction, it would be uh, one point three three to one ratio was that four by three. And that's how most silent films, uh, early films, uh, you know, that were, that were coming out. Uh, so this would be silent. Or films. through the 1940s, okay? So you're sitting there watching uh, James Cagney, you're watching Bogart, you know, you're watching, uh, you know, those type of films. Uh, you see that old Casablanca, you're seeing that, that, that sort of that boxy image, um, you know, in terms of that image of that four to three ratio. Uh, let me go back. Over here, you saw this like this Godzilla here. Um, let me uh, screenshot that. Let me just grab that, and that's sort of what we saw when you went when you go to the movies. You saw this four by three.
on the movie screen. So if I was updating that, it would be look like something like this here. And this would be that uh, 1.33 to 1, you know, ratio, that 4 by 3. It's really boxy. Uh, we would see that type of image. Uh, it was very, it looked pretty even, just more rectangle. And films, uh, if you watch the, like, uh, probably the original Godzilla itself, the black and white, uh, the original one, it would probably look like that, too. And so um, that was pretty much the standard. That, that was the, you know, the standard for, for many, many years um, in terms of, you know, filmmaking. It was that 35 mil. That was that 35 millimeter camera, you know, in terms to get you that imagery of uh, what you saw right there. So that's sort of the first aspect ratio when you're talking about film and filmmaking in the early days. Like I said, from the silent film era uh, through, you know, pretty much, the, you know, I would say a lot of the 1940s. And you think of when you see those old classic, you're taking a film history course or something like that, you see that aspect ratio. Um, predominantly used because that's all they had you know uh, we take advantage of today in a digital uh, environment we can make whatever crazy aspect ratio we want but back in the day when you were using film and filmmaking equipment uh, to get those things done uh, it was uh, worked out like that and then you had um, let's grab that image again redo it and then you had the invention of sound Okay. So how, how did they how did they do that? You know, uh, that was the next technology. We were able to get uh, sound and not just have uh, you know the, the 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 image with a card in between telling you the storyline and a live band playing the, the music at the theater uh, if we were going back in time uh, you know and we had the invention of sound so where sound was attached was the same thing like we were talking about And so what ended up happening is you had your four pref or four perforations. Okay. But you lost that that horizontal. Okay. So what would happen is there would be a line here and you'd have your multiple tracks of sound. That would go down here. And then your image here. And so you lost You lost a little bit of the horizontal plane compared to if the image, you know, from the sound, because this was the sound. On the film strip itself. So as it played through, the music would come out and you would hear. And at that time, it was like mind blowing. Gosh, we can hear sound coming from nowhere, you know, and that was amazing and got people into movie theaters in terms of of uh, what we're doing but it, it, it changed the um, the um, the aspect ratio I believe it changed it to a, I thought it was a 1.331 yeah that's, that's what it was 1.33 it moved it to um, like a one point I believe it was I thought it was a 1.19 to 1 ratio just lost a little bit of that that groove you know in terms of uh, you know what was going on and so um, they worked on it a bit and then from there because audiences didn't like that squeezed um, 
aspect ratio in terms of what they were doing. So then they went into, from here, it went into same technology and everything, but it went into the uh, academy ratio. And that was 1.375 to 1. And that pretty much, uh, you know, uh, was the, the way that everything in, in terms of old movies, once you had all the talking and stuff, um, I think that's where it went into the 1940s um, in terms of how that worked. And that was sort of the Academy of Ratio of 1.375 to 1 was sort of, that, that was your old movies again. That was your Casablanca, those type of things when you had sound with your movies. I would say the earlier 4x3, four by, four by the 1.33 to 1, uh, that was more of your uh, silent movie era. You know, and as we got into, you know, bigger films, the standard, uh, you know, the Academy Ratio was predominantly used for everything at that point in time uh, but there was another invention that came out and I can't believe how quickly we've gone through time friends bloop, 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 bloop. so we went from cave paintings to paintings of portraits and and uh, you know landscapes to a camera to film we've gone through the silent film era we're in the early stages of uh, you know the st academy academy ratio uh, in terms of, you know, the old movies uh, that we always uh, come to see and enjoy if you're, if you're into uh, classic movies. Um, and, but something happened. And you're sitting there going, Polly, what are you talking about? What happened? We had the invention of something new. And that something new was a little box. And it was in black and white. And households from America, or all over the United States, and it was called the television. So uh, we would watch, uh, you know, uh, Leave It to Beaver. <laughs> We watched all different types of shows, you know, and everything was on a television set, okay? And you're using that, um, that square um, ratio within there, within that box too. So that, that ratio, aspect ratio, stayed pretty square because that's what worked on a, a cathode ray tube um, you know, a, a television tube, um, the TV was a, just a giant tube, and at that time, and uh, you would get that sort of that square format. So, um, you know, with the, the uh, invention of television, you know, you got to get people in the movie theaters, you got to, you got to do something grand with it. So, um, you know, they started into the, uh, you know, come up with widescreen. And so widescreen, so movies had to compete with television, and cinema had to compete with television, so they had to find ways to go widescreen. Okay? I hope everybody's having a good time following along. I know we're getting pretty, pretty detailed in uh, what we're talking about, and uh, we're going into some real nitty-gritty stuff here on the filmmaking side so I hope you're enjoying yourself and enjoying our little history lesson a little bit because the history lesson is important to learn because you're gonna learn where the history is and why what you're gonna be doing as a storyboard artist is so important and how do you work with that work with these aspect ratios uh, in terms of what you're doing each and every day so if you're enjoying this live stream uh, please consider subscribing it's easy just click subscribe, hit the bell notification button so you don't miss the next uh, live stream. You get a little prompt to sit there and go, hey, new live stream. Um, so please, I appreciate your support by subscribing to the channel. And uh, two, if you're enjoying this uh, particular 
uh, lesson here on the live stream on our storyboard uh, mastering the basic series please drop a like on this particular video and drop a comment i'd sincerely appreciate that to help push this out to other uh, youtube creatives out there uh, so we can reach more people uh, any questions at this point in time or i'm going to keep bore, i'm going to keep jamming through our little lesson here and get into the uh, more on the aspect ratios and how to use them any questions drop them in there appreciate everybody hanging out i got chauncey i got blissful soul i got uh, buddha belly i got bruce lee I got Wolf Midnight. I've got a lot of great people hanging out with us tonight. If this is your first time on the live stream. Type your name into the ch into the chat. Say hi. Say give us a what's up, and uh, we'll continue going. Okay, so um, let's get back over here. Let me take a sip of my drink as we're rocking and rolling through time right now. Okay, friends. Okay, cool. So let's talk about. Uh, we were I don't know, we last left off. We were talking about television, the invention of television. And now people are sitting in front of the, you don't need to go to the movie theater. And the movie theater looks the same as the television set, you know. Uh, I don't even have to get up. It, it's there. And I got a black and white TV and wait till the invention of color. Boom, mind blow. Um, and uh, so how do we get people back in the theaters? You know what we're going to do? And this goes back into uh, Blissful Soul's comment earlier. Now we're going to stretch that screen out. And we're going to go widescreen, folks. That's how we're going to get people back into the movie theaters. So let's go back into our uh, Photoshop file here. And uh, let's keep hammering, or, hammering away. So um, we were talking about the invent. Uh, let me throw a quick save on here, too, so I don't lose all this work we've been drawing. <laughs> this was full soul says traveling through time is always fun <laughs> we don't have any dinosaurs on this adventure <laughs> so okay cool um so let's talk about um the tv the tv used that four by three uh ratio so if we're looking at tv it used four by three in terms of uh that box here in terms of what we were talking about um the, the format, what they did was they started to use spherical lenses. Let's start drawing over here. They changed the lenses, okay? So um, they did, sort of did early, 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 early widescreen. They had to fake it. It wasn't really fake, but they had to fake it, right? Because they had the same technology on the film, but they, so they changed the lens, uh, and they used spherical lenses. Spherical. They used spherical lenses on there, okay? And what that did was... So let's grab that piece of uh, film strip. Let's try that again. Oops. Okay, so we had that film strip. Okay, we had the four perfs. Okay, you still had your sound on the strip. Okay, and then what they did was they went and cut the strip. So if a sense that was knocked out and the film was um, the film was wider but they cut down the height to make it wider. Okay, so they were able to gain the, and they cut down the height. So they cut down the height on that 
and that's how they were able to get um, sort of that that uh, that that, uh, that scenario for widescreen. And they call this a, a three preparation, a three pref. You know, so because it only needed. Three. Okay, so um, that's how, how that sort of pu pulled together a little bit. Um, so, and, that, and that's how they did. So they pretty much, what they did with that piece of film, they just chopped this part out, chopped this part out, and then you had your, each of your frames went that way uh, through your film. Um, and uh, that pretty much gave light to the aspect ratio of one point, whoops, Eight five two one, and that was the aspect ratio. Ratio from there, okay. Um, and then, then the only other thing that they did from there, uh, the next invention was the true widescreen, where they used anamorphic lenses. And what that did was the anamorphic lens um, was able to grab the whole image in a widescreen, true widescreen. And I think one of the big first films like that was like Ben-Hur um, with uh, Tr uh, Charlton Heston, uh, those type of films. And what they were able to do is that anamorphic lens was able to capture, but then as it went back onto the film, it stretched the film out. And the way that sort of looked was like this, where you went back to that four perf sort of scenario. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You went to that lens like that. You still had your sound here. But what ended up happening is is your image and it was really it was it was it was scrunched so what ended up happening is when it was projected So the, the anamorphic lens, it, it squashed image, then uh, on projector, they stretched it back out. So that image now went from there and then went into the projector. Now you had your your widescreen mountainous shot with your man on it. So it helped to, to push that image out on the screen. And so that's how that sort of worked into widescreen we talked about the 1.85 to 1 uh, aspect ratio in uh, in terms of uh, what what we're doing so um, you know it, it distorted it, it, it squeezed and de-squeezed uh, that image uh, for you okay and then today you know um, we have we have some pretty much the, the, the two main aspect ratios we have uh, for something like today uh, is usually the, you know, um, you know, the, 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 the is, is, is pretty, it's pretty, pretty simple in terms of 
what's going on today you know you got the you're pretty much the the 1.85 to 1 is um, one of the the, 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 the major uh, cinematic aspect ratios we usually do for films and then the second one would be the uh, 2.351 aspect ratio as well and uh, that would be shown right here so if you're looking at uh, you know these two different films you know and you're looking at this 2.351 or you're looking at the 1.85 to 1 those are your two major cinematic um, you know uh, ways that where we're shooting films uh, today um, and uh, those are the, the, the two basic uh, ones that everybody, you know, when we're shooting a, a cinematic film, uh, and that's what we're doing. So, and there's a difference between these two. If you look at this Godzilla image here on the aspect ratio of 1.85 to 1 uh, versus the 2.35 to 1, it's um, really different. You know, it's giving you a different um, shot. And the cinema, and that's where now that we've gone through, this is the exciting part now. And uh, I think it's fun to go through the, um, our, uh, you know, went through like a, a Blissful Soul was saying, you go through the time history time loop. We started off with drawing on caves up to, you know, uh, anamorphic lenses and, and, and our two major. Uh, players when it comes to um, aspect ratios now that we have all that film history and, and knowledge behind us how do we use this as storyboard artists um, what is the what is the story that we're trying to tell um, what is the director's story that they're trying to tell and how do we encompass that into our picture frame and, and denoting our picture frame for our storyboards and how is that going to work so let's dive into those two major uh, cinematic um, um, areas and like I said one of them let's recapture that real quick this bad boy okay and let's talk about the two point the two point three five to one okay we're gonna leave that one there and then let's go grab that other bad boy the 1.85 to 1. Let's grab that too. And then we're going to have a little showdown between these two aspect ratios. That are popular in films. Let's grab that guy and throw it down. Okay. Put that guy, throw him down there. Okay, so let's talk and let's throw a quick save. Okay, so let's talk about these two. These are, like I said, the two most popular of the um, aspect ratios for current films. Oh, uh, IMAX. So that, that was a good question. And IMAX is... Uh, Good question, Wolf. So let me uh, move this down a little bit over there. 
a lot of people are asking about IMAX. IMAX aspect ratio is going to be 1.43 to 1. And that's aspect ratio. Okay, cool. Ooh, Blissful Soul is still cranking on the imagery there. Very cool. So Blissful Soul says, um, uh, would the larger ratio have a better composition to lead the eye? And how would you plan the composition? Ooh, I like that. Cool. Okay, so let's talk about these two before we get into that. So if you think about, you know, um, this type of widescreen. So when I'm when I'm thinking of widescreen, let's bump that up a little bit. Um, I, I have a, a a larger vertical plane, a longer I can't write too well. A longer horizontal plane. Okay. And if you're looking at a wide, wide shot, this would be your wide shot. Okay. And then we go into our, our film history, like, like what, when you're putting shot compositions together and, and choice of shot, you know, this is going to be your, 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 um, your fantasy film. So if you go back and now you start watching films again to study what we're talking about today, you go back and you watch Lord of the Rings. You're going to see some really nice wide shots. Uh, it, it would, you know, are, are we using 2.35 to one? You know, um, you're you're shooting, uh, you know, uh, Dune. You know, I, I know we have the IMAX aspect ratio also, but we're going to film fantasy films. We're going to film huge landscape films, westerns. You know. Uh, Lawrence of Arabia, we're, you know, a uh, huge battle scene, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I want to see everything in that shot. I wanted to see all the, the edges of those films, you know, in terms of what we're talking about. And uh, that, that's a great aspect ratio. If I'm trying to, to uh, do world building, uh, futuristic, fantasy, Western, uh, something that I, I want to see these epic, grandiose um, you know, establishing shots, Godzilla, huge and bigger than ever, you know, I, I want to be able to see that super wide angle, you know, there's a lot of layer, and we could talk about layering in, in a little bit, uh, I can do a lot more with this shot, but then at the same time, the 1.85 to 1 ratio, I have a, a lot more give on the vertical plane. You know, I have a lot more I can do with it. So if I'm doing a, a, a skyscraper movie, a giants, you know, something like that, where I want to look up and be amazed, uh, maybe that's you know. So or you know, a lot of films. This is your. your this is uh, for a comedy. Uh, this is for a drama. You're going to see the 1.85 to one aspect ratio. So with, with this, uh, you know, these are the types of films. Here, and these type of films, you're gonna do, you're gonna do, um, you're gonna do comedy. Uh, you know, if I'm f filming Beetlejuice 2, I'm gonna maybe do it in a 1.85 to one ratio. Uh, you know, I'm doing just a comedy in, in general. I'm gonna do a drama. You know, 
um, um, it's it, the, the picture feels a little bit nicer. It's more your average eye. I'm not, I don't need to see all the peripheral. Maybe it helps me to stay focused on that particular character. You know, uh, there's reasons now why we want to shoot a certain way and uh, have some fun in terms of uh, what, what, what you're doing. So, um, you know, I, I would say the, the, the 2.35 to 1, like I said, why it's a wide, super nice wide shot. Uh, we're going to we're going to want to see, you know, that. And I know that Quentin Tarantino and the Hateful Eight even went wider than this because he wanted to have uh, those epic scenes and uh, those epic sequences. He even went bigger, you know, or even wider than that, you know, in terms of I don't know if I wrote down what his. size was with the hateful eight ultra wide i think it i think it uh i think uh quentin tarantino went 2.76 to one and that, that that's that super wide so uh two point seven six to one and that i think that was that the hateful eight you know uh, I think we were talking about that um, in terms of just just films. Uh, that's extreme, extreme wide Panavision, you know. In terms of uh, you know the the lenses, you know. I I know Quentin when he was uh, putting that film together. Uh, whoop! I'm so sorry. Keep flipping back and forth. Whoop, there we go. Sorry guys. Cool. Thanks for catching me. Blissful soul. Okay. So we were talking about this here, and we were talking about, um, let me just repeat again, the, the 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio, just a longer horizontal plane. You know, you're going to, when you're doing world building type of films, uh, where I, I'm doing, uh, you know, something that, that's epic, I need to see those environments. Um, you know, I, I need to see Lord of the Rings, you know, or The Hobbit. Or uh, you know that 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 or a fantasy film, you know I got a big uh, you know space epic film, or I have a, you know a western. I have the expanse of the prairie and the Tetons, and you know I want to see the sunsets, and then you know the, the, the hero rides off into the sunset. Um, you know I want that epic, um, you know uh, you know super super stretched out um, extreme wide we were talking about Quentin Tarantino the hateful eight uh, he went into those huge uh, Panavision you know uh, you know lenses uh, uh, anamorphic lenses and, and brought back that that uh, you know he stretched that as far as it could go to 2.76 to 1 you know those are some extreme uh, you know um, you know, getting all that detail. We'll talk about, we're going to go back to that in a little bit to talk about layering. And if I'm watching like uh, the good, the Sergio Leone's good, the bad, the ugly, and now you can have things going on in the foreground and the background at the same time because uh, you're so stretched out as creating layers within layers of the film. So you can have multiple things going on uh, in the film that you could see depending on the lenses that you're using. You know, and then you have your your 1.85 to 1, uh, which, you know, will give you a higher vertical plane. You know, it still gives you, uh, you know, a nice horizontal plane, but a little bit more vertical plane. And, you know, usually see, you know, just your average typical comedy, drama, those type of films will use uh, that particular aspect ratio. And as you can see with the image with Godzilla, you know, these images are are different. You know, it's the same image, but just uh brought to you differently using those aspect ratios to give you a good idea of where you can go with those aspect ratios and then uh, like I said you know um, uh, Wolf Midnight asked about the IMAX ra uh, ratio and I believe I wrote that down here it's 1.43 to 1 and you know you have IMAX which is its own uh, immersive environment you know within that particular shot as well so so then you get all this information and we're talking about all this cool stuff and we're talking about all these different aspect ratios. Now, 
you know, how, how, how do you work with those? And how, Polly, how do you do work with those with the director? And, um, you know, how, how, now as a storyboard artist, now that we've went through the lesson of the history, we've talked about these, these images and how do you use them? So how do you do it? Well, we have the aspect ratios for you to use, okay? And, you know, um, for you to play around with, you know, then also too, like we talked about, you know, uh, you know, how do you use these? How do you talk to your director? These are one of those questions that you're going to ask when you're sitting down with your director. You've read the, the shooting script. Uh, you've been hired for the job. You're reading the shooting script or you're working on whatever project you're working on. Those are just going to be one of the questions. What is the director's vision of the film? How do they want to see it shot? And how, you know, the question of the aspect ratio is going to be one of those darn questions you're going to ask right at the beginning. Because when you're drawing, you're going to compose differently those shots. Uh, you know, in terms of the aspect ratio you're picking, and then on top of it, you have the shot, whether if it's extreme wide shot, close up, your lens, what lens choices, you know, um, those are all going to be the factors going into what you're putting down in your picture frame, in your images for your, uh, your storyboards. So these are all uh, important things. So, you know, if you're going to do some grandiose landscape, and you're only shooting in, you know, uh, 1.85 to 1, you know I mean? You, you don't need to have all that extra gobbly good because your, your camera's not going to pick it up. So, um, or you really want all that extra stuff in that, man, I just want to be blown away. I'm sitting in the movie theater and I want to be blown away with that landscape. And I want the little river over there and I see that over, you know, uh, it, it'll all dictate how you're going to storyboard your shot. So you have to ask those questions. And the more you understand how uh, cameras work, how lenses work, how aspect ratios work, this is going to make you a more powerful uh, visual storyteller and uh, put this all together because you're talking the film language. So um, you'll be able to communicate a lot easier and in terms of uh, what you're doing. So um, the next thing that you're working on is like, okay, cool, I've got the aspect ratios, but these aspect ratios can give you different flavors. Like we see the two uh, images with Godzilla. Let me pull that back up again. Boom. We see the two images of Godzilla on the 2.35 to 1 and the 1.85 to 1 as well. So, um, you know, how do you start playing with this stuff? And, uh, you know, and one thing I'll throw a, 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 a screwball is you have directors that use different aspect ratios in their movies. And if you haven't paid attention when you're watching a movie, I invite you to start paying attention to seeing how the movie is put together and how uh, the aspect ratios might have changed. And that change in that aspect ratio might give you a different emotional feeling. Oh snap, Polly's pulling out the knowledge now. You know, so if you think about it, and you think about somebody like Wes Anderson, uh, if you've seen the, the, the uh, fantastic Mr. Fox, uh, you know, all of his, his, his uh, uh, you know, different films, you know, Grand Budapest Hotel might be one of those. That if next time you're watching that film, watch how the aspect ratios will change, okay? And he will go through um, three major aspect ratio changes in his storytelling style of the Grand Budapest Hotel. And he will use the, the four by three, uh, you know, old school, you know, early film uh, style because um, it's sort of nostalgic. It's a, it, it is a different point in time. So he picked the three different aspect ratios because he was he told the story in three different time periods. So with, with what Wes did was, depending on the oldest time period, he went to the um, four by three aspect ratio. And then, he, you know, he used 
two other aspect ratios to show different points in time. Maybe it was 1.85 to 1, and maybe the other one was 2.35 to 1. So, and he interwove the three different aspect ratios into his film. So next time you're watching the Grand Budapest Hotel, I invite you to take a look to see how the image changes uh, throughout the movie in different time periods and using aspect ratios to accomplish that. But he's not the only one. You know, there are other fantastic directors out there that do the same thing, a little bit of movie magic. And uh, if you look at, at uh, somebody like Christopher Nolan, who just won the Academy Award for Oppenheimer uh, last the other night, and um, you look at his body of work and how did he use aspect ratios and did the same type of thing in a different way. And if you watch a film uh, like something like the... Uh, the, uh, the Dark Knight, if you go back and you're a Batman fan and you like uh, Christopher Nolan's work on uh, his Batman series, um, take a look at The Dark Knight and watch how the aspect ratios change in that film. And, uh, you know, uh, where, you know, you have your, you know, your super wide shot and then you cut into the uh, I, I have to go back to see which shots went, went into what and what aspect ratios. But you, when Batman was to get into a fight with B Bane, they were going to go crunch it down into that 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio. And other sequences, the, he had it in IMAX and went back and forth. You know, uh, whether it be the 1.85, I have to remember which uh, aspect ratios. But he's changing aspect ratios from that, uh, you know, the uh, IMAX, you know, uh, you know, 1.431 uh, into a, a little bit closer. So when Batman's going to fight against Bane, they're going to get it tighter in those shots. And you see those, um, uh, you know, uh, those shots changing, you know, within aspect ratios. So that makes it absolutely fantastic when you have a director like that that's mastering all these different tools. You're mastering aspect ratio. You're mastering with lenses, uh, you know, uh, besides the fantastic talent that you're shooting uh, for Oppenheimer, whether it be uh, Robert Downey Jr., uh, Killian Murphy, you know, it's whoever, you know, um, Emily Blunt, everybody in, you know, working together, you know, in terms of, of all the different aspects that you can do to, to, to make you feel something, to make you in there, get you in into the film, not just, you know, there's so many different uh, strategies. And as a storyboard artist, you need to be doing all that thinking and working with the director to visualize, you know, that, that, that to get the audience into that picture. And that's what makes this profession so exciting. And uh, there's so many different uh, parts to it. Uh, Chauncey is saying, the director I'm working with is using a lot of spherical lenses. And that was tricky. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It makes it uh, difficult for you as a storyboard artist, but the better you know and you know how all these uh, aspect ratios and lenses work, it'll help you to create better boards and uh, you'll get faster and faster the more experience you get uh, working with those uh, different uh, systems, you know. So if you're thinking about uh, what we're talking about and you're going from the, the most extreme of not necessarily something what Tarantino is doing, uh, and you go to that four by three scenario. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Let me pull these together, keep all this together. Turn it off. So all you're really doing as a, as a filmmaker, in terms of, of what you're doing, is all we're saying is if we have that four by three.
let's just say this is like a Tarantino film and it was the 2.76 to 1 and you had your 4 by 3 and all you're doing is going do you want to go wide or do you want to go narrow and that's what you're doing and you're, and you're picking that spot whichever way you are on that dial of which way you're going are you going narrow or are you going wide in terms of that shot now how, how and that's where that aspect ratio that that aspect ratio is playing out so think about it this way a different way to think about it so maybe I want it to be real I want it to be close. I want it to be old school. Or feel or mood like old cinema. We're going to go to this. Uh, that was the lighthouse keeper. Um, uh, William Defoe, uh, just you know, there, there's a couple films out there that use this this four by three, really narrow, you know, old, you know, uh, we we see it as a, a, a old cinema. Maybe I'm gonna do a a, a a a remake of some sort of Bogart movie. You know, I'm, you know, I, I, or I'm doing a Chaplin movie or, or something and I want to feel that the, the, the film is old. Okay. Um, when I see the, the wide shot over here, uh, I'm going to feel this is more modern, uh, or modern film. This is going to be epic. It's going to be landscape. It's going to be a Western. Uh, I can world build. I can spell it like. I'm going to world build. I want that. I, you know, I want environment. Landscape. I already said that already. But I want, I want it to look like that. That's why we would pick those shots. That's why you would be drawing in that aspect ratio in terms of what you're doing. You know, then you have the directors that are swinging all swinging for the fences and, and using all different aspect ratios, um, either to tell their story. It is their creative choice, you know. And if this is your film that you're working on and it's your own boards, then it's your creative choice of where you're going and providing solutions because it makes you feel differently when you're watching in those aspect ratios. You know, uh, maybe I, I am gonna. Uh, do more of that, uh, you know, that, that uh, 1.85 to 1, you know. I want it to be a realistic sort of setting, a little bit taller. Maybe I'm doing a horror movie, you know, or I'm going old school, early horror, you know. Uh, and uh, I want that 4 by 3 really narrow. The mummy's after me, and I want to feel claustrophobic, and I want to feel that way. So I'd use that particular aspect ratio in uh, terms of... Uh, what I am doing so um, you know uh, as we're having fun and we're doing these things I'm just trying to see if there's anything else in my notes I wanted to see and talk about um, where's the other note I was looking for You know, um, where did I put that? Where did I put you? Do, 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 do. Okay. 
let's talk about modern stuff real quick. Uh, we've already talked about um, the history of aspect ratios. We've talked about, um, you know, uh, as working with the director or your client. We've talked about, you know, what, are the, what, what is a, more of a narrow aspect ratio? What is that giving you in terms of the mood and style and feel? And then we go to the other side, on the opposite side, the wide um, you know, shot in terms of what we're doing and the, the feel and makeup of what makes that a great shot. And you're working with the director to find out where that, uh, you know, is going to, that dial in is going to be uh, for the story you're trying to tell. You know, we've talked about different directors from Wes Anderson to Christopher Nolan and uh, which way they can do uh, that they do their films. And sometimes they'll pull multiple uh, aspect ratios in, in terms of uh, what they're doing as well, you know. Um, and then we can go extreme. And, you know, I would say uh, right now, like this. Is this go back and talk about the 240 to 1 aspect ratio real quick? Oops. Okay, so let's talk about that 240, 2.40.1 aspect ratio. Grab this real quick, but okay. So what is this aspect ratio, friends? This is your modern So this is your modern This is your modern aspect ratio from computer screens to flat screen TVs. Okay, so and what this ends up being, the 240.1, is when you're looking at it, this way, this is 1920 pixels. by 800 pixels, you know, and uh, this is what we're always talking about, the 16 by 9, come on pen, 16 by 9, so if you think about it and you take nineteen twenty divided by 800, that's going to equal into the fraction of 2.40, okay? We call it 2.40 to 1, okay? And that's how our, oh my goodness, I did it again, guys. I'm so sorry. Big Paul, back to little Paul. It's in there chatting. Okay, so again, right here, um, the 2.40 to 1 is your modern aspect ratio for computer screens and flat screen TVs or your modern TVs, okay? You have 1920 pixels uh, laterally. Uh, that's 1920 pixels uh, to 800 pixels high. And when you divide 1920 divided by 800 equals 2.40. 
and which we say is 2.40 to 1. So, uh, and that's how that um, ratio works right now. Uh, we use that and we either do a, a you know, a, a 16 by 9 uh, scenario like that um, in terms of our modern uh, television sets and that type of stuff. You know, the other thing too, that we have is right here. And that's the uh, so if I'm looking at this right here that we're talking about and this is our 9 by 16 ratio and this equals to a device like this, your cell phone. Okay, so that's a different aspect ratio. And that gives you a different A different ratio and some films are shot like that um, I know it's not widely accepted uh, for everything but we use our cell phones all the time and uh, you know that particular aspect ratio might be used in, in a way in a film or something like that if you're doing some sort of communication like that or you see that shot within there so um, those are some other we have technologies today which are absolutely phenomenal, whether you're Adobe Premiere, you're using DaVinci Resolve, you're using CapCut, you're using some other form of editing. We can squash and stretch all these different uh, visuals into whatever aspect ratios uh, that you want uh, to be successful with. And, um, you know, uh, there's so many different ways and images uh, that you can create with these different um, um, aspect ratios and, and how are you going to use those? How are you going to, to, to play with those uh, within your shots, you know, in terms of the realism, realism or modernism versus what you're trying to do. So um, I hope this gives you a lot of tools. Let me know in the chat, was this, was this helpful to you? Uh, we went pretty hardcore in depth. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, the knowledge that I'm trying to, to share with you tonight, uh, let me know. Was was this helpful to you? Is this is this gonna is this helping you in terms of uh, you know uh, helping you to uh, hone in your skill sets? I think filmmaking is so important to know how things are done. We went through the history. We went through the different aspect ratios and when to use them, when not to use them. Uh, you know, what, what is the image you're trying to capture? And uh, I, I hope um, that this was uh, good for you. So uh, I'm going to leave on one last part here. Let's, let's take one of these um, aspect ratios and sort of have fun with it a little bit. And, and sort of draw within that aspect ratio, and then we'll go ahead and call it a night. So um, I hope this was helpful to you. If this brought you some great information, please consider subscribing to my channel. Help me grow this channel, and together um, uh, we can work together uh, as we uh, work on storyboarding together on this journey. Uh, if this is a great video and you learned a lot yourself, Please don't forget to drop that like into the uh, video itself. And also please uh, drop a comment too. Just even if it's an emoji or something, just, just go, yo, Polly, what's up? How's it going? You know, uh, love hearing back from you friends out there. So let's grab these aspect ratios real quick. Turn this back off, go back into Photoshop. Let's sketch in a couple to sort of see where we're going to go here. So let me go back to Photoshop here. I'm going to 
that go and pull these all together. Turn that guy off. Let's go over here. And grab that. Oops. I'm gonna grab this shot right here. So let's do it like this. Get later. Yeah, I'm going to grab that aspect ratio real quick. I'm going to do two different drawings so we can sort of show Let's grab that one. Cool. I'm glad you found it extremely helpful, Chauncey. Awesome. Okay, so we got that one here. Um, it's four by three. Real quick, I'll stretch that guy out a little bit. So let's grab these shots a little bit. That was a little goofy crazy there. Let's not do that. Try this one more time. So we can actually draw together. And then you can see the difference. That's better. Okay. So we got two different aspect ratios here. Okay, so how do we draw within these two picture frames? Yeah, anytime, Chauncey. Anytime. Okay, so let's have some fun here, real quick. And let's use this and storyboard within that that shot itself and then we'll call it a night. Cool. Okay, so I got this shot here. So when I'm looking at a shot like that, I'm, I'm thinking just automatically, 
you know, landscape. I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, how, how I would do that, you know, in terms of, you know, what, what, I, what I'm doing. And when I have an epic, you know, landscape in terms of what I'm doing. And maybe I have some sort of writer just coming out of here we have these epic shots What we're doing, we want to see that massive. We got the the horse in in the in the background there, rolling through. You know how how are we gonna do this? In terms of the old west. Here is going super slow. Come on, computer.
So we want that extreme, extreme wide shot. Try to show this epic landscape. Majestic. Clouds in the sky. Oops. Something that's an epic shot, you know. In terms of what we're doing so this would be your epic landscape shot you have your person up against the nature Got the Tetons and stuff here. Background. And this person is, is there. I said I sort of drawn this shot earlier when I was prepping. You can sort of see that epic shot in terms of uh, using that aspect ratio for that shot. Um, and then for something, that other shot we were looking at, you know, maybe it's a little bit closer. want that shot
You want that character to feel claustrophobic. So use that four by Just gives you more of a claustrophobic So if you think about that, those ratios, you know, um, big difference between aspects ratios and, and the way they make you feel in terms of these uh, two aspect ratios, whether it be the, uh, the four by three aspect ratio Or if we're going for something like that IMAX, uh, excuse me, the uh, ultra wide 2.76 to 1, uh, it gives you a great uh, difference in terms of uh, scale with the aspect ratio of the movie screen. So I, get, I hope this gives you a couple ideas of, of when you're storyboarding, you know, and creating those shots, um, you know, of, of how to. Uh, you know, get those shots together and have some fun with it. Uh, you know, again, in terms of our, like we were talking about, you know, uh, over here, you have your 2.35 to 1, you know, wide shot. You know, with that aspect ratio, I want it to be epic landscape, western, you know, it is super wide. Or if you want it narrow, your aspect ratios, you go for the, the four by three in terms of what you're doing. You're, you feel claustrophobic. Uh, something's intense with that particular uh, character.
in terms of what you're doing. You know, either go wide or narrow. And you play that between the two of, of what you're doing. So, cool. Hey, what's up, Ray? How's it going? Glad you can join in on the live chat and say hello. This is, uh, you know, Chauncey said, uh, thanks, Paul, and good night, everybody. Um, Chauncey also say, extremely helpful, yes. Uh, Ray says, hello. Hi, Paul. A little bit late to the party, but I'm restarting the stream now. Awesome. Appreciate you joining in, Ray. Great to see you. Thanks for stopping in to hang out with us tonight. Super appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to hang out. Uh, and then uh, Blissful Soul, uh, the 4x3 expresses more emotion. Yeah, it does. Uh, Blissful, Blissful Soul, you've been on point tonight. Good job, my friend. Um, you've, you've nailed a lot of this stuff. Your, your thinking is in the right direction. So as a storyboard artist and you're putting these all together, it's like, how do I put these shots together? How do I get evoke emotion into my audience? How do I make them feel like, wow, I've been invited to another world? And all that's going to come down to uh, one of those aspects to help you drive your storytelling. And that's through aspect ratios. We've talked about various different directors and working with your director. Uh, we've talked about, you know, so many different things tonight. But again, uh, it's it's been a great night. I thank everybody for hanging out with me so long. Uh, just to, to, to quickly recap, uh, we've talked about how important it is to have film knowledge, uh, know the, those uh, important steps in your filmmaking abilities, and that you need to know your filmmaking terminologies, your film language. You've got to know your aspect ratios and uh, understand how they work, how do you can use them creatively. We went through the whole history of, um, you know, uh, pretty much the uh, for creation of art from drawing on caves into painting in rectangles, whether it be a portrait or a landscape, the invention of photography to the invention of capturing moving pictures with film. And then we've talked about why, how does the, the um, for pre preparation work and those type of things in your cinematic uh, knowledge on how film works how sound came into play, uh, the invention of television, and that you know narrow four by three scenario, and then how did we want to get you back in the movies again and expand that screen to widescreen? You had movies like Ben Hur. You have all the Sergio Leone movies that were uh, extreme wide shots to show you the West and the spaghetti western starring uh, Clint, Clint Eastwood, uh, you know, Good, the Bad, the Ugly, Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef, and Eli Wallach. You know, there's just so many great movies out there to watch. Or, you know, uh, we've talked about um, what is the emotion and the mood that's evoked from these different aspect ratios, how directors like Christopher Nolan, uh, who just won the Academy Award for Oppenheimer yesterday, how did he use uh, aspect ratios uh, in movies like The Dark Knight prior and changing up uh, aspect ratios in the same film and not sticking with the same uh, aspect ratio for the whole film or other creatives like Wes Anderson with uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel check out those films uh, some great stuff we talked about modern you know uh, you know 16 by 9 frames here on YouTube and other aspect ratios and how to use all those things so if you got some great value out of tonight's lesson drop a like on this particular video drop me a comment let me know that you learned something or just to say hi. And again, if you're, you've gotten a lot out of this, I have over, what did I say? 60, uh, 67 or 66 other live streams you can choose from. Watch them all at your leisure. Watch the ones that'll make the most impact to help you in your development and your journey as a visual storyteller. And again, Folks, I had a great time with you tonight. I hope you learned a lot. I spent a lot of time putting all these notes together and stuff to be able to share uh, what I know and everything about aspect ratios uh, with you. I hope you got a great uh, deal of knowledge out of it. I look forward to seeing you. What's today? Today's Tuesday or Monday. So I'll see you on Thursday for our sketching after hours session. 
and uh, Blissful Soul. I'll, I'll try to get in that uh, that that perspective uh, tutorial in one of these future episodes for you, so we can talk about perspective and those of you that are struggling with perspective and how to get better perspective into your storyboard frames and your shots. So again, have a great night tonight. I'll leave you with my contact information one last time. But thanks for watching. If you're watching this on the replay. Thank you for hanging out and watching the replay. And again, have a fantastic night and a great week, everybody. I'll catch you in the next video. Stay tuned.